Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So, man, there's been a lot go on since we have last recorded, yet it seems, I mean, we, it seems like it's been a long time since we've recorded. Well, that's because I've taken two vacations since then. So for this show, I wanted to talk about travel tips and then include on the back side of that, uh, uh, we were both at KetoCon and just talked about some of the vendors because where we were two, even two years ago and now it's just amazing the different options there are. And a lot of them we talked about it. Some of them are we've been done interviews with. But I think a good thing about travel, you know, just kind of vacation-wise, those type of things, they're sometimes the most difficult times because – Sometimes you can get yourself in a situation where you're not prepared. You know, we've talked many a times about preparation. So, uh, so what do you do to prepare for travel? Um, so the travel portion of it, I'll just take things with us. So I'll generally have first bacon, just throw a bunch of slices of bacon in uh, a baggie, and I carry those in my carry-on bag or in the car with us, however we're traveling. So the the actual travel of it, I am prepared. But then once you get there, there's really not a great way to be prepared for every situation. So, I mean, again, I'll have things in my bag, um, some, you know, meat sticks or something like that to try to make as good a preparation as I can. But you just have to kind of have that mindset. I think that you're going to have to be able to be agile and flex on the fly. Yeah. So let me, I can talk about some specific examples because this time uh, I went, I had two plane flights and then I drove across the border. So went into Canada. So my two plane flights, I had kids in tow and everything else. And the last thing I wanted to do was have a whole bunch of junk with me. Right. Uh, So I brought almost no food um, on that travel. But I had went ahead and proactively documented on my Google Maps where uh, where a, uh, some grocery stores were that were on my trip, made sure I hit them in the U.S. before I crossed the border. Because, so, uh, you know, I, uh, it takes out the wild card of can I get this in, in Canada. For the most part, Canada is, is a very easy. I mean, most grocery stores, they have similar items. We're never going to have any, a lot of some of the convenience stuff, but I mean, from a standpoint of uh, you're not going to get like pre-shelled eggs, hard-boiled eggs, like you can at a Costco here. The Costcos are a little different there. And, and where I was traveling, there wasn't a Costco. So I made sure I, I hit stuff before I went across the border. So just my go-tos when, it, when we talk about things like that is hard-boiled eggs, as I already mentioned, your purse bacon. Well, since I don't have a purse, I don't actually have purse bacon. But just to just to kind of follow up on that, the pre cooked bacon is is a, a an easy go to. Yeah. Even if you're buying the Oscar Myers where it comes two slices in a thing, it's it's yeah. kinda of odd but I mean and I, I actually cook my own. So a lot of people I, ask me how I eat it. Um, because I think you say normally, one bite at a time. <laughs> well, because like normally people think you heat it, right? And when you're on a plane or in a car, you don't have a way to. Heat. I don't. I we I literally cook it, put it in the refrigerator, and then take it out, put it in a baggie, and take it with us. We eat it cold. Um, sometimes it's still refrigerator cold, and sometimes it's warmed up to you know to room temperature. But I don't heat it, and I don't worry about things growing on it and whatever either. Uh, that's actually an interesting point, and that's something to be aware of. If you get the Oscar Mayer singles, those are pre, they're, they're pre-cooked, and they're a little bit more ready to eat, as opposed to, I'm a Costco fan, so, I mean, we, we talk about Costco all the time. Their pre-cooked bacon, it, it really isn't as good unless you, you do have a microwave. Okay. But... That said, where I'm traveling, and even when I pay a little extra when I travel, usually to have one of those mini kitchens to ensure I have a couple burners if I want to do eggs, and a microwave if I need bacon, and uh, that that type of thing. So, um, do you do you pack any 
electrolytes, salts, or anything like that? Um, I do salts, but in general, I always have that in my purse um, because if you go out to eat, you generally are not going to get good quality salt. So I, I usually have that always in my purse. Um, and I do magnesium because I take magnesium as a supplement, but potassium I really don't. So It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do have those uh, ketologic uh, meal replacement shakes. I usually throw a couple of in my bag along with, uh, you know, for the sometimes for the kids, sometimes for me, um, the F-bomb. We'll talk about F-bomb later, but they're a little single. I, I like, I, I'm, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. Now, we did find something at KetoCon, and we will talk about it later, but uh, the electrolytes, there are individual packets that you can, they're easy to carry for travel, and you can just throw them in a 16-ounce bottle of water. So um, those will probably be the, become one of my go-to things. So when you go to restaurants, um, I tend to sometimes get stuck with the not the best solution. So I uh, would like to throw out there, um, once you get into where I was, there there is not a large quantity of restaurants available. As a matter of fact, the route I drove, there's you're lucky to find a, even a McDonald's. So, uh, so I did, at the place where I stopped to get food, I did go ahead and stop at McDonald's. Uh, I'm just, I know it's not the best quality of meat and stuff, but it's hard to pass up the consistency and the fact that they will put any of, like I will, my, my, my go-to order there is I can get the equivalent to what the egg is on an Egg McMuffin. I can't remember what they call it, but I just say the round egg. They always know what that is. You can order a la carte. And then I just say, I want three McDoubles with just cheese, no bun, and it comes like on a breakfast plate. And basically it's got cheese in between two patties. And it's really kind of lame. And if, you, if you're feeling crazy, you can add, convince them to put, put it on lettuce. But uh, Yeah, I, I've used McDonald's. I mean, it wouldn't be something that I would, you know, if I'm at home, say, hey, let's go out to dinner and let's go to McDonald's, right? But on travel, my mom and I had gone to Indiana, and she got hungry. There wasn't a lot of choices, and, you know, we, we really needed to get where we were going. It was wintertime. So I ran through the drive through and grabbed a couple of McDoubles for myself with no bun and, you know, just asked them to hold the, the ketchup. And so, I mean, again, I don't. I wouldn't say that it should be a weekly, even monthly outing, but in a pinch, I, I definitely think that they're good enough quality that, you know, if you're hungry, yeah, it's your purpose. Yeah, it wasn't always that way though. So sure. Yep. So, uh, but places I prefer, man, I, I I had one huge fail. We were at a Mexican restaurant. I always get fajitas because it's always safe, and they had something different on the menu, and it was. Uh, Basically, it looks it sounded like chicken fajitas with a red sauce, but it had mushrooms and a couple other vegetables. And I, I, I wasn't, I hadn't had any vegetables hardly at all on the trip, and uh, so I decided to get that. And there had to have been something in the sauce because I just felt a couple hours afterwards. I felt like I was starting, I, you know, like when you get to, when you get to the point where you can feel it. So I, I know that was a fail somehow, but. Uh, that said, uh, it's, it's not as bad to travel as it used to be. So yeah, but yeah. where where we want to eat, man, we were when we were in Austin, mm-hmm. that black steakhouse. You can just go in there and tell them like how you want it, and just yeah. cut they cut it right off. The anybody is in Austin, and there are some other locations too. I'm not quite sure, but basically around the Austin area in Texas, if you guys are ever there, Harry Black's Barbecue is the bomb. <laughs> yeah. But their pork does have. I was gonna say sugar, head down. So their pork, pork does have brown sugar in it, I think. Um, in, yeah, but their their brisket was, oh my gosh, it, it was it was wonderful. In fact, that's the only place that we had meals while we were in Austin, isn't it? We didn't go yeah, that is the only place I ate. Yeah. That's. 
kind of crazy. Starbucks coffee <laughs> and Terry Black. That's all. Which was my plan all along. I, to be honest, since last KetoCon, I was uh, looking forward to that and planning all my meals around that. So. It was too, but usually I have some hankering for a salad or something, but you're right. I did get, even when I didn't eat there, I got a sausage to go and ate that later. Yeah. Which, yeah. the jalapeno and cheese sausage, so it was pretty fantastic. Yeah, that's what we made the meal out of when our plane got delayed. And All right, so vendors. We talked a little bit about a few things. The ones I mentioned was uh, the F-bomb. And we have a whole interview with him um, back in the show notes. Great people. Uh, we talked about them before. Yes, I, it's, I, yeah, I agree. And my kids like it, and they're very kid friendly. And the best part is, is they're in those little pouches, individual servings. You pay a little more, but when you're traveling and it's in the bag, it's very super cool. easy to pop that. Um, yep. So, and then the uh, KetoLogic is the one I said. I don't use that often, but KetoLogic. And they have a meal replacement. So, you're, when you think about the, the old version of protein powder, it's one that's a little more, um, well, obviously the fat content is a lot higher. Uh, it uses MTC powder and some other stuff to make that. And it's the only one I've found that is shelf-stable. So I, I'm a little I'm a little more tolerant of the you know uh, fake sugar and that kind of stuff when it's something that I can just pour into water. Um, uh, they they also have a uh, exo- exogenous ketones, which is I call my desperate my desperate packets uh, that I'll I'll, t- I'll take if I'm going to there's no no other option and that you just put right into water. You know, you, you could just dump that straight into uh, a, a, you know, like a bottle of water and shake it up. But I didn't actually use that. I didn't use any of that on the, on this trip. So I guess that, that's my emergency. So what were your uh, favorite things well, at KetoCon from a vendor perspective? We're not going to talk about any of the... The, the food-wise. So, yeah, so the vendor. So first of all, I was super happy to see how many people were there compared to last year. Uh, just goes to show you that this movement is growing and uh, people are starting to listen to it and they're starting to accommodate. So that was, that was a huge surprise and very pleasant. Uh, one of the things for me that was the biggest surprise and um, my... my uh, so we don't have favorites. Can we go through these in like alphabetical order? Yeah, except that I I really want to point this out because if we've been, well, we, I have been so vocal about hating cauliflower, and I've attempted it so many times, and I just can't get it, but there was a uh, company there who had cauliflower crust, and honestly, I don't even know why I tried it because I knew I was going to hate it, and pleasantly surprised, I love this. It does not taste like cauliflower. It does not have the texture of cauliflower. And I actually even ordered some when I got home. So Wow, that's the same be, a lot. Yeah, it should be here today or tomorrow. So uh, it's and from Outer Limits. I hope I'm saying this right. I'm going to pull it up here real quick. Um, no, it's Outer Isle. Sorry. It's Outer Isle. Well, you're really screwing uh, up my alphabetical order yeah. idea. Outer Isle Gourmet. And I will put a link to it. So anyone in our area, which, again, we're from central Illinois, I do not think that this is any in any stores around us, but you can purchase this on Amazon. So I will put a link for the Amazon in our show notes, and um, that way anybody can have. So I would have never tried that had you not told me I had to try it. And even after you told me I had to try it, I was just like, eh, it's, you know, it's cauliflower pizza crust. I didn't. I have my back. So I wouldn't say that was a uh... – all right, so we'll do our yeah, two it favorites. Really, it was really good. But I think for me that was my greatest surprise, right, because mm-hmm. I knew going into it that I was not going to like it because I hate cauliflower. Now, I mean, it tastes great, and people who don't want to make their own cauliflower it is an awesome alternative. There's nothing in it except cauliflower, eggs, and spices. 
Um, so it's very clean. I was very happy with that. Uh, so let me think about this. I don't know if I have a greatest surprise. Well, so, you're pretty adventurous with food, so that's not. Yeah, I'll, eat, I'll eat like anything. Yeah. All right, right, so let's go through in alphabetical order, like our pros and cons, things we liked. I do have a, my biggest disappointment, but I'll save it till we get there. Okay. Um. So okay, alphabetically, we had Bunker Hill cheese. Sleeper. Never heard of them before. Yep. Uh, local farm owned, farm managed. They got to keto sideways. They've been in the cheese business since forever. I don't actually remember how long, but uh, they had a a crispy. They, they had a baked cheese option, but I, you know, I I, you know, I have wisps, at keto, you know, like here in town, so. I wasn't that impressed with those, but I really did like their cheese and the fact that they go basically from cow to cheese, age of them, I mean, like everything in house. They had a garden herb that was fantastic. I really liked, and then they had a jalapeno that I also liked. Yeah. So anybody so. who follows us on Instagram would see that because again, their cheese was part of our meal because we oh, got stuck in the got stuck in the airport. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, it, to be honest, the Bunker Hill, for me, uh, the cheese whips were really good. They had kind of a progressive uh, mild to hot, but theirs is not Parmesan. They had Swiss and cheddar. Um, oh, you mean from the wisps perspective? Correct, yeah. From the, oh, I really should stop calling them wisps because that's a name brand as opposed to a... Yeah. They're baked cheese. Baked yeah, cheese. see, I'm just not a baked cheese guy. Yeah. I I mean, I liked them. Um I, I, I just liked how they were so small. The guy that was there also did their web development stuff. I mean, it was just like yeah. that's the kind of hometown kind of pride thing. Yeah. So if you're into supporting small mom and pop shops, this is this guy was great. He was super friendly, very knowledgeable. Um, definitely recommend um, talking to him. Okay. So alphabetical order. What's next? Um, so, Cho- Choco Perfection, I think that's how you pronounce that. So, this one was a chocolate, and to be honest, this one for me, I had I had seen it on Instagram some, had never really tried it, uh, was not expecting it to be that great. I know lots of people rave over Lily's, and Lily's chocolate is okay to me. Uh, this one actually was really good. I thought that the flavor was better than Lily's. Not something that I would really ever purchase because I'm I'm not a sweet kind of person, but it was good. Uh, it was dark chocolate, so it wasn't overly sweet to me. The texture was good, so it would be a good alternative for somebody who's seeking to get. And I don't I I can't remember. I'll have to look at what the the overall carb content was, but I feel like it was a lot less than Lily, so. For me, it was an okay. It was an okay option. It was good flavor, but again, probably not something that I personally would do. And I don't think you tried this one, did you? I don't think it did either. Yeah. I, I when you're a ninety percent chocolate guy, it's, there's not really a variation that's really that important to you. I mean, right? You know, when you're having that much, it's just pure cocoa powder anyway. So, so I got yeah. I mean, so far I don't get a lot of yeah. Yeah, so I, I can't believe I didn't. Spent, I can't believe I didn't try it, honestly, though. Yeah, I probably spent more time with the vendors than you did this go round. I went. Yes, I, the first two days, I basically did not do anything with vendors. I didn't do anything with vendors till the last day. I was like solid speaker action. Yeah. And I was doing more networking this year, and, and so that's. Yeah, and I don't network nor do social media, so there you go. Um, the next one, and this one actually was a little bit of a surprise to me, only, well, A, I had never heard of the company before, um, but the second one is because I am not a huge fan of high percentage dark chocolate, so Eating Evolved, uh, these guys had some dark chocolate that was 100% dark chocolate, correct? Now, that I did try. Yep. Was it, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, it was too much for me. So, 100%. They, and I actually liked it a lot, which I was a little bit shocked with because 
again, well, A, I'm not a big chocolate fan, and B, I'm not a 100% or high percentage fan either. But I actually liked the chocolate. They had a roasted um, coconut butter, or no, coconut oil. Is it coconut oil? Darn it. I'll, I'll look that up and let you guys know uh, and put it in the show notes. But that was really good. But then they also have these um, cups. And one of them had um, coconut oil inside of it. And I forget the other flavor. But those were fairly good, too, I thought. It was like a either an almond butter or a peanut Oh, it was thing. almond. Yeah, you're right. Almond almond. Almond. Yeah. Yeah. Again. They were really good, I thought. Um, again, the quality of the chocolate, I thought, was really good. The texture was good. Uh, there, there was no waxy, weird feeling in my mouth, and I'm a texture kind of person, so I thought it was good. Did you try the Epic? Of course I did. Okay. So, so Ep- I did not. <laughs> so Epic bars are way back from, I mean, Epic bars have been doing it for, I don't know, like six, seven years. Uh, they've got elk meat. They've got buffalo. I mean, they were, they're huge in the, in the paleo primal sphere. Uh, so they've been, you know, a, a major sponsor of paleo effects forever. Uh, so I've just noticed that in the last year, they've come up with quite a few that have lots of extra stuff in it. Mm-hmm. So there was a bison cranberry bar that was that had I can't remember how many carbs but it was it was on the line at least the cranberries were not like they were not sweetened or anything they were just regular and but they had one that it isn't monk fruit it was uh, some other fig yeah something and that was very carb rich it would be the equivalent of uh, is there no dates is it dates? I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, you, you just got to be careful um, on those yeah. because you could get, I believe, they had they had some pretty high. So if you're, you know, if you're a CrossFitter, blah, 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 you know, we've talked about that before, you may be able to get away with uh, a little bit more of a carb refeed. Uh, but, again, Epic Bars, you just just be careful when the ones you order. I mean, there are, they are a sustainably, but the reason they've come up with some of these extra ones is they were bought by somebody. So okay. Serves. Yeah, they had pork rinds and stuff there too, but they had stuff in that. Um, I didn't, like I guess, I would have not had a bar had somebody not handed me one. Yeah. So again, I do order those. I have ordered those before, full transparency. I bought a case of them before, but uh, off of Amazon. Um, so, alphabetically, we're coming up to Keto Savage. Yep. We did, uh, two interviews ago, we did Keto Savage. Uh, they have that the Keto Brick. Yep. Um, there's no surprise there. I like them. I, st- I still like them. Yep. Um, I did hit them before the, before the third day, so... Yeah, those, those ones John was stealing the uh, samples from on that. Uh, so Keto Mojo was there. Uh, that's the not a food. Yeah, not a not a food. So they have the uh, meter that does the glucose and the ketones. I have that, so I stopped by and got a little discount to purchase my strips for it. So that was a a nice little surprise. Uh, Keto Chow, they've got some new. Uh, flavors out. Their chicken soup is just released, actually, when they got home from KetoCon. Uh, great company, great people. We've interviewed them as well. So something that you guys are looking at. I cannot personally do their meal replacement because of the sucralose that they use. Well, the that's not in the chicken, though. Correct. Right. So they don't have the sweetener in the chicken. But if you're looking for their meal replacements, just be aware that they have Fair enough. Uh, something to mention about Keto Chow. I mean, you can listen back to the the interview for one. But they they put they put um, extra. They uh, let me what I'm trying to say. Basically, like n- not the electrolytes, all those things. They put magnesium. They put all. They put a lot of extra stuff in there. Um, the reason why I don't carry that it, within my quote unquote emergency bag is because in order to get the fat content up, you're mixing it with heavy whipping cream or 
you know, uh, if you don't do dairy, you're, you're, you're having to do coconut uh, cream, something like that. And that's just for me if, if it's an emergency for travel. So that's more of a at home, uh, I'm craving soup. I can't, I have not ordered yet, but I will, I will order that for sure. Yeah. Cause I, I, I was lucky enough to try this, some samples of that and I thought it was fantastic. So. Yeah. I actually got to try the soup at KetoCon, which yeah. um, was, was awesome. So uh, one of the things for me, like I occasionally enjoy ice cream. My husband loves ice cream, so I do make it myself sometimes. One of the, um, and, and it was a sleeper too, and I think this is local to the Austin area, but it was uh, Mama's Creamery. Their ice cream, I felt, was really, the texture was great, the flavor was great. Um, I have tried to reach out and get to be able to order it, and I don't think, I, the, the company's really young, and um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a mom and pop shop, but I don't think that they are yet able to ship. Um, but if you're in the Austin area, check them out because they are phenomenal. Did you try them at all? I, I, I got to be honest. I don't remember. There was two ice creams. Yeah, you tried. I've tried, I tried them both. Killer Way. No, actually, you did not. There was three. There was Killer Way. There was Love. And there was Mammoth. I don't know. I know you did Killer Way and Love. I am not a huge ice cream guy, so none of those stuck in my f- memory for for remembering. Yeah. So yeah, I got nothing on that. Um, yeah, the old Keto Cookie, which is now Nui, is their their new name. They were there again. I still love those guys. <laughs> I wish they hadn't changed their name. Um, we interviewed them, and yeah, it was it was the marketing. It, I get it. Uh, Parm Crisp, which was a new find for me. I thought they were you wonderful. Li- you liked them better. I did right. like them better than they had the... flavored versions, which I thought was pretty, yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, I liked them better than the, than the local that we get, which is not local, but um, whatever we can get locally here, I like the Parm Crisp better. However, I did not realize that I actually can get Parm Crisp locally at my local Kroger. <laughs> So I will be purchasing from the local Kroger because I did I did like them better. Yeah. Uh, Peak yogurt was another one that was pretty good. Control. Uh, the I did not get to taste it. However, they weren't at the booth when we went, but I've heard lots of reviews since then. So I'm eager to go find them. One of the best ones, and I I know we're running out of time, but I do want to get to these is uh, Pedersen's Natural Farm. They had, for those of us who want kielbasa and sausage, they have them to taste at KetoCon. And the closest that we can buy them is about 45-minute drive. And I actually have told my husband next weekend we're probably driving to go buy it because it was so good. I do. Uh, that sausage was fantastic. I've okay. A freezer full of sausage, though. <laughs> uh, from my pig. Yeah. Um. The, just a rapid fire a couple, the Peely Hunters that we've talked about, the Peely Nuts before, um, Primal Kitchen, you know I'm a Primal Blueprint certified coach, so of course um, those are my go-to stuff from a lot. Um, Sogo Snacks, again, we've interviewed them before, they were, they have not changed, uh, their their stuff is was was good. They are uh, So who stick. was your biggest disappointment? You said you were going to wait till the end. Yeah, no, but we don't have time to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, we do. Who and was I don't it? want to throw them under the bus. What was it? I okay, know. fine. I'll throw them under the bus. Perfect Keto. They've got a podcast, and I follow them, and I, I don't know if I was just disappointed because they weren't very interactive at their booth or what, but, like, they were there setting up, and I kind of talked to them a little bit, and I was like, I don't know, just really disappointed they they had they were doing free samples but their product was pretty much the same as you can get online so i didn't even buy any there and uh they've got a couple new products uh, but it's just just i don't know disappointed i I, maybe i had heightened expectations because that they're they're pretty uh pretty interesting on their podcast but uh yeah just uh i that was the one thing I knew I was going to come back with their stuff, and I came back with none of it. Surprisingly enough, 
I think okay. that's enough. So. And so they were they were my go to uh, exogenous ketones, and I bought lo- bought lower or got bought lower priced alternatives that were very competitive. So they do have a lot more options than they used to, but uh, I did not buy any. So yes, they were my biggest appointment. All right. So my biggest appointment was Swerve. To be honest, they were there. Um, although I love Swerve sweetener, and I do use that when I bake a lot, but they have um, packaged uh, like your um, cake, cake mixes. Mix. And I was pretty excited about that, but then I looked at it, and it's full of crud. Their ingredients are not good, so beware anybody who does keto. Um, I was well, really uh, disappointed in that one. I mean, let's not completely throw them under the bus. Under, of the ones we saw, they could come out with alternatives. That are, right, yeah. They had two At the time of this versions. recording there. Yep. They had two versions um, with them, and they, yeah, they did not have good ingredients, in my opinion. I would not purchase them personally, so. Well, then, you know I wouldn't, so. Because <laughs> I don't really do that stuff. Because I don't bake. <laughs> um, but uh, just to throw it out here, because I did mention it, um, the electrolyte packets that we talked about as a travel piece that I will probably start using, the company was uh, Ultima Replenisher. Yeah, and the guy that was working there, uh, working the booth, uh, does keto to help with his ADHD, so I really would like to talk to him. Yep. So I uh, hope hopefully they do an interview. Alec. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, and then the final one I'm going to throw out there, and then we really do have to be done because we're running out of time, is uh, Vital Earth Vitamins. Uh, these guys were phenomenal. They're another one as well we're going to reach out to and uh, try to get an interview with. He was extremely knowledgeable, and him and his mother ran the booth during KetoCon, and they were just awesome people. So those are the kind of people that I gravitate to, not big companies. I like to... And he's a doctor that's actually taken a lot of nutritional classes above and beyond his degree and stuff. So he was very, he was very, uh, well, like you said, knowledgeable. Yeah. Uh, So then the only other thing that we did, did samples of is that Zevia... And we've talked about that before from a, yeah. neither one of us are a big soda person. They had a alternative to Red Bull or energy, let's call it an energy drink alternative. And I, try, I tried it, but I didn't even finish the can. It just doesn't fit my needs. So Yeah. I, I did try one of their sodas. I can't remember. And it's because it was a flavor that we don't get here. But you're right. I'm not a big soda fan. I'm not a lover of carbonated drinks to begin with, so they offered to give me soda and bring it home, and I didn't even... Pick them up on it? No. All right, well, there's our rapid-fire keto. We promise we won't shove uh, more KetoCon stuff down your throat, but we just want to at least talk about some of the options out there from a vendor perspective and emergency travel, because I just spent a lot of time in airports and whatnot. I mean, it's super exciting that we actually now have options, right? I mean, up until recently, we didn't have a lot of options to go and get any food. Um, so I'll put all this stuff in the show notes, though, and links to a lot of these. Maybe not every one of them, but those that I can easily find. So, All right, guys. Until next time, thanks for joining. We'll see you.